Country from the Key Studios on your home for Sunday's Falcons Rams game. Kickoff at 1. Sports Radio 92.9, the game. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Welcome back to the program. Sports Wrap with Dwayne Walker. 11.22 and ticking on the flagship station of your Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta United FC. We are Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Once again, my name is Dwayne Walker. Siobhan Fraser is producing tonight's program. If you'd like to get involved, why not? 404-741-0929 is the number. We're also on various media platforms, including Instagram, including Facebook, and you can't forget about, well, the Twitter. At 929 The Game is our handle. If you want to get in contact with me on Twitter, it's at D Nice radio. All right, so let's start it off uh, as I said during the tease. The Falcons right now, they're 1-5 in five with 10 games left. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of positives that I'm going to point to, all right, that I can take from the last two ball games. The offense has started to at least kind of kind of get going just a little bit. Happy to see Devontae Freeman finally get going. I think he ran for like 88 yards, caught uh, uh, caught some more balls, et cetera. So made himself a definite asset on the offensive side of the football. Also has been nice, although, I mean, I mean Matt Ryan is Matt Ryan. He's thrown over 300 yards in the first six games. And, I mean, I've gone over it a million times. Like it or not, he's the first ballot Hall, Hall of Famer just because of his raw numbers alone. But this season's numbers – to be honest with you, they're somewhat empty because it's not resulting in wins. And if I could be perfectly honest with you, uh, even though Matt Ryan is my quarterback, I can see and have seen how the game of football has changed. And if we're being honest with ourselves, you have to have, you have, to have more than one way of being effective. And we all know what type of quarterback Matt Ryan is. Matt Ryan needs everything basically perfect for him to operate uh, efficiently at his at his absolute best. I mean, I get it. I get it. But we've all known that. So when our offensive line is not stable, which it has not been, do not be surprised if Matt Ryan is not working at optimum level. We all know this, Right? So, coming into the season when I said, oh, I think the Falcons will be 10-6, and six, that was strongly based on the offensive line, in which I thought they were going to make a correction to. I thought Matt Gono, imagine me, I'm thinking that Matt Gono, number 73, undrafted cat, I'm sorry, went to a Division three school, uh, didn't really play last year on the practice squad. This guy had such an impressive preseason that I thought that he would make a difference in the lineup has not seen any action so far. So when I'm talking about how this line is going to be good, this guy was taking care of one part of the line. I, I, I've been going around town asking, hey, what's going on? I asked Dave Archer. I asked Harry Douglas. I personally went to Minnesota on my own dime to see the Falcons play in the opener just so I could see Matt Gono. But Matt Gono did not go well. So that's what I'm waiting to see. So I feel as though my prediction was partially skewed because I haven't seen the guy who I felt was going to make a big difference on this offense. I know what Matt's going to do, but in order for Matt to operate just at a maximum level, man, everything has to be in set. Think about this. Just think about this. What has not worked on a consistent basis so far this year? The pass protection and the running back play. Wide receiver play has been solid. Tight end play has been absolutely solid. 
Hoop is going to, Hoop is having a Pro Bowl type year. He will be a Pro Bowler. He was an alternate last year. He will be named a Pro Bowler this year just based on his raw numbers alone. So on the offensive side of the ball, it all starts with that offensive line and it just has not been consistent. Too many penalties, too many hiccups, too many mistakes at the end of the day. So if they can get that if they can get that cleaned up, as they say, uh, this team will be a lot better off. And it's really that simple. So this is what I, <clears throat> nothing drives me more crazy than to see uh, an illegal procedure or, or the counts on, on uh, two and we jump on one. I think Dirk Cutter in this offense, in this Falcon offense, they should really simplify everything, man. If you got to go on one on every hut, go on one. Just go on one. That way everybody's on the same page. But we can't get inside the 20-yard line and have somebody jump off sides because we're trying to draw them off sides, but our own guys can't remember the snap count. So it's like little stuff like that that absolutely, positively drives me bonkers. Half past the hour of 11 here on the flagship station of our Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta United FC, Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. You're tuned into Sports Wrap with Dwayne Walker. All right, 404-741-0929 is the phone number. Said I'd take your phone call, so why don't we do just that? Let's go to James, who's on the line. Hey, James, you're on Sports Wrap with Dwayne Walker. Welcome. You know, what's going on, sir? You got it, man. Hey, man, trying to keep it positive, bro. Trying to keep it positive. Trying to keep it corporate. <laughs> Uh, well, I can appreciate that. I'm, I'm I'm at the job right now, but I gotta I gotta be real, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm a little upset, and I, I just I got a little pressure on my chest, man. Can I can I can I talk to you? Absolutely, bro. Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, man, uh, I hate the fact that Dan Quinn is, is the consensus is he has to go, and I understand that. But the thing that's really making me very upset is that he already he only relied on two players. Two players, and these two players have let him down, bro. Vic Beasley, Isaiah, number one. Isaiah Oliver and Vic, Vic Beasley. Beasley yeah. Let yeah. him down. He he bet the house on them this season, man. Yep. And Picked up I Vic just, Beasley's option and uh, started your boy, and uh, he's been getting roasted, man. But d Dub, check this out. Check out the, the whole totality of Dan Quinn being here. Check out the positivity, the brotherhood, the, the togetherness, everything that he's fostered here in, in, in six or seven seasons. And all of that Five. going down the drain because Five of seasons. Vic Beasley and Isaiah Oliver, man. I, I really hate it for him, man. Well, yeah. I know he, he got to go, but I just hate it, man. Well, before we kick him out the door, okay, because to be honest with you, I don't see Arthur Blank. Uh, letting go Thomas, De- uh, letting go Dan Quinn in the midst of this season, no matter how rocky it gets. But uh, I actually still believe that there are some wins in there. Like I said, it's just a matter of turning things around. And sure, it would be easy to go ahead and let's say, okay, let's blame, uh, let's blame Matt Bryant because he mixed the extra point. No, you can't blame Matt Bryant because he missed the extra point. However, you can give credit to the Falcons for battling back, not just laying over and actually making a game of it after trailing by 17 points in the second half. So I look at that as being a positive. When things aren't going well, what do you have to do, James? You have to do something different, right? Absolutely. And I'll tell you what the Falcons did on uh, in this last game against Arizona. What they did was they actually chose to take the ball first as opposed to putting their defense out on the field first. And as a result, the Falcons scored on their very first possession. And that's a positive. That's something that needs to happen with this offense. So uh, I look at things like that. So two tough road games, always tough to win on the road. And uh, can I say this also without sounding, uh, uh, um, I don't know, not sounding weird. James, can I ask you this? And I want you to be honest with you, James. James, you have to promise me that you'll be honest with me because I look at you as representing just the uh, the average Atlanta Falcon fan, okay? I am him. And he is me. Even though the Falcons are losing, okay, mm-hmm. isn't, there a, isn't there a little side of you that enjoys seeing guys like uh, Haskins play against our Falcons, seeing a guy like... Uh, 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 the young man in Indianapolis. Uh, how about uh, how about uh, 
Deshaun Watson in Houston. We got Russell I, I, Wilson. Do you I, hear I, it? I see where you're you going. Go? Go. Hey, but listen. Where you go. But listen, man. That's more the reason why the Falcons need to take a, a serious look this upcoming draft, man, and draft a more a diver, um, um, How can I say it? We need to do, we need to diversify the offense, if you know what I mean. Just just you know what I'm saying. Just just a little wrinkle. That's all. Does that make yeah, sense? I'm, I'm, I, I feel you, and I'm gonna let make this last point. I'm Go gonna ahead, ride, baby. Go ahead. What do that got to do with Isaiah Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> not a damn. Hey hey hey, not a damn thing. And we'll talk about that defense when we come back. You're listening to Sports Chat with Twain Walker on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game and 92.9 The Game dot com. We'll be back. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Welcome back to the program. Sports Wrap with Dwayne Walker. Oh, yeah. I know I talked a little bit about the offense uh, this last segment. Right now we're going to talk about the defense. And I know we have a couple of people on hold. We got Mike. We got DC in Lithonia. Mike and Mac Dunn. We're going to get to you guys in just a second. Uh, let me just say this. Now, I talked about the offense and and uh, some of the positives that we can take from the last two losses, coming back and actually scoring some points and making a game of it. But really, the, the biggest issues, quite obviously, are on the defensive side of the football. Uh, Dan Quinn, on his own, decided that he would take over the uh, defensive play call. He'd be the D.C., and one would think if you're performing for your boss on a daily basis, like he's there at the stations, he's actually working with you, you would think that you would get more of an effort. I don't understand. Well, let me just let me take that back. I do understand why the defense is not being successful from a philosophical standpoint. And I'll just start right here. I'll just start right here. Now, as far as the whole brotherhood thing, yes, I think it still exists. Yes, I still think the guys are together. Yes, I still think they can turn it around. But at the same time, the Falcons have to switch this philosophy, this Dan Quinn philosophy, of how it's not important to sack the quarterback. It's only plausible. It's only effective if you just, it's enough if you just get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? No! You've got to put the quarterback on his keister. On his, you got to knock it, you got to, you know, you got to sit him down. It's already bad enough you can't hit the quarterback, really. So when you have the opportunity, you have to do just that. You have to be physically intimidated. The Falcons have not physically intimidated anybody except one game, and that was the Philadelphia Eagle game. And besides that, it's been non-existent. It's almost laughable. Kyler Murray had been sacked umpteen times heading into the Falcon game last week, but we couldn't manage to get him sacked at all. That's sad. So Dan Quinn cannot stick with this philosophy that, oh, it's, we just have to move the quarterback off his spot because we're not moving the quarterback off his spot. We need to sack the quarterback. That needs to be a different philosophy. All right, And I just mentioned Kyler Murray. There's other cats that are coming up. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, in case uh, Drew Brees doesn't come back. We have had an opportunity to say uh, see Brissett in Indianapolis. Uh, Deshaun Watson, as I mentioned. Uh, Dwayne Haskins earlier this year. So for me, I'll be honest, it, it's been kind of neat watching the African-American quarterback get an opportunity to play and thrive in the National Football League. We've got Russell Wilson coming up. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just call me weird, but I just like seeing people get uh, opportunities to, to do their thing. And also, I look at it as being a teaching moment for our franchise. And obviously, we know because we had Mike Vick in the early 2000s. Mike Vick, was that, that cat made me actually go out and buy season tickets for the Falcons. I mean, when they grabbed Mike Vick from Virginia Tech, next day I was like, oh, babe, we got to get these season tickets. It was that simple. We need to go back to those days from the standpoint of – um, getting a mobile quarterback in this system. Matt Ryan could be here for the next eight years. 
Okay, how old is Matt? Thirty-four now. He'll be for the next six years till he's forty. We still need to have somebody in the pipeline that can give Matt a spell if he needs a spell. If we need some offense, uh, running packages for different uh, uh, players. I mean, teams around the NFL they do that right now. They do run packages for their quarterbacks if necessary. So I just think the Falcons need to step it up a bit, quite simply. 404-741-0929. Let's go to the phone lines. We do have um, D.C. from Lithonia holding on. Hey, D.C., you're on Sports Shop with Dwayne Walker. Welcome, man. Yeah, what up, what up? You got, you got it, man. It, man. You, you got, got it, man. It, man. It's, it's, it's uh, a hey, little rough around, around these parts, parts right, right now, now, though. though. Man, I, I mean, I, I changed hats with the season, bro. Like, <laughs> There's... okay, I had to take my Braves hat off. Wow. Now, now I can't wear my Falcon hat. I mean, hey, hey I got still go... got my Hawks hat, but hey. You got you know, Atlanta, Atlanta United, United bro. bro. You got Atlanta United. United. They're, They're still, still in it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right so, so what do you got, got man? Hey, look. Go ahead. Hey, look. This is my thing. I just had a oh, lot. We have not changed or progressed with the game. The game is all about the mobile quarterback now. It doesn't matter if you move him off his spot because he can move. You know what I mean? He can move and throw at the same time that the quarterback can now. So you got to move. You, you got to change with the game. Well, you know what I mean? Oh, I, I absolutely know what you mean. And uh, you have to. I mean, you have to. Well, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You don't have to, but if you don't, you can see the end result. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like, it's like Kyler Murray scrambled for a first down. Very controversial call at the end of the Falcon game. But I mean, it was third and I don't know, it was like third and eight, or third and whatever it was. But the fact of the matter is. He used his God-given talent and skill to run with the football and made it look easy to get the first down. That that's what we need. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so I mean, that's what we that's what we need. That's problem with the defense now. We got one grabber, uh, Robert Alford, and you put in another grabber, and that's uh, Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's, it's just, just not. It's, it's not, not a good look. You got rid of one grabber, and you got another grabber. What's up? It, it's it's <laughs> it's just not a good look right now. And really, the only person that you can. Uh, I'm not going to say lay blame, but the person that's uh, mostly responsible for it, unfortunately, is going to be Dan Quinn because these are his guys. These are guys that he is obviously hand-selecting, hand-picking. We know he likes uh, bigger defensive backs, trying to go back, I guess, to the Seattle uh, Seahawks days. But quite simply, man, it ain't working right now. So look, so, so this is what the Falcons need to do, all right? And, and this is just my opinion. More blitz packages. Enough of this, oh, it's third and 12. I'm going to line all five of our guys back in the backfield, defensive backfield on the, you know, at the 12 uh, yard mark and prevent them. And we'll ha- let them have everything underneath. No, don't let them have sh- nothing. That's the problem. That's the problem, man. We got to go all out. We've got to blitz more. I'd rather you play man to man and blitz the kitchen sink, right? And give the quarterback. 2.5 seconds to throw as opposed to 6 seconds to throw because these quarterbacks who are going to be facing, they're going to rip you apart. Jared Goff, say what you want. He's my fantasy league quarterback. This cat got minus one this past weekend. I didn't even know a quarterback could even get a minus one. Whole other story. But my point being, uh, obviously, Jared Goff has gotten the job done here over the past couple of years, reached the Super Bowl last year. And then right after that, we've got Russell Wilson, who's absolutely playing at a Pro Bowl slash MVP level right now. So it ain't going to get any easier. Let's go to McDonough and take another phone call where Mike is standing by. Hi, Mike. You're on Sports Chat with Dwayne Walker. Welcome. Hey, dog. What's up, man? You, you got, got it, man. It's your world. world. Hey, look, I ain't no head coach in the NFL or nothing like that. But even I know. Man, sex creates fumbles. Sex creates turnovers. But, well, I, I don't know exactly what he said word for word, but he said, All right, I mean, sex are just bonuses. We're not looking for sex, right? That's, that's, look, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing, man, but everybody out here knows, man, that's his philosophy that it's about, it's not about the sack, it's about getting the quarterback off his spot.